On today's episode, we are going to take a look at three stocks that I believe are a great buy for me right now. The first stock is one hitting the gaming department, but I'm also super bullish about it because of the augmented reality and the virtual reality market. The second stock is one in the educational slash training world that has big customers like AWS and Walmart. The third company is one in Southeast Asia, and it has partnership with C Limited right now, and many call it the Shopify of Southeast Asia. So let's get started. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the thumbs up and get your free stock on Weibo. The link is down below. All right, so the first stock we're going to take a look at is Unity and this is ticker U. They just reported earnings last Thursday and the stock price actually took a nice hit. Um, if you guys do follow ARK, I know they are. They recently just purchased some more of the stock. Um, so a lot of people are getting excited about it. If you guys have never heard about Unity, Unity is a game engine that can be used to create video games. A lot of the mobile games right now that you play, for example, Among Us, the super popular game of quarter four of 2020, was made via Unity. Most of the games you play in Nintendo Switch, if you have a Nintendo Switch, are made from Unity. And if you guys have been watching my ARK investment videos of their big ideas for 2021, where every episode I take a look at a new topic that they mentioned, um, you guys would have seen the virtual worlds where I talk about virtual reality opportunity and augmented reality opportunities for the future. And that's a market that's going to continue to grow. And within that market, if I am super bullish in that market, which makes me bullish in Unity because Unity is able to create augmented reality virtual reality process right there's a they're able to make games but their opportunity doesn't only end in games they have great partnerships with for example automotive companies transport transportive companies for them to kind of create like a a virtual reality ecosystem of what's inside for example the pilot of a car um you can also use them for film animation cinematics for architecture engineering and constructions you can do, use them for gambling games educational technology brands and creative agencies so there's a huge huge market that unity can hit and unity has it has the solutions of you to create your process so let's say you want to create a game you use unity to create your games they also have what you use unity after you create the games unity can also help you advertise can also help you test out your game can help you create clouding services so unity is through the process of the beginning of the game and post creation of the game all right so now that we know what unity does the stock is ticker u and it is traded under the new york stock exchange right now it's sitting at about 128 dollars closer to 129 and it was down about 14 15 percent for the day on friday after reporting earnings on thursday after hours this gives it a market cap of about 35 billion dollars if we take a look at the past year, Unity is a recent IPO and it is up about 88% from its last from its first closing day. And if we take a look from its peak, it's down about 26%. I did take a look at their earnings and their earnings look great. I'm actually doing a full analysis on Unity later on. So make sure to check out the video if you want to see a full analysis on Unity. But their earnings were great. And people are going to ask Jose, why did the stock price drop 14% if their, if their earnings were great? That's simple. It was overly hyped in my opinion right unity was overly hype it was overly extended and it was priced to perfection so even though they came out with great earnings it wasn't the perfect earnings so investors were like okay this company is not as great as i thought it would be even though it's still great it does it didn't meet the expectation of investors which ended up dropping price which maybe is giving a great buying opportunity to many if we take a look at future growth the company is expected to grow 22.7 percent on average for the next three to five years so this is definitely a hyper growth stock in my opinion anything over 15 is a, is a growth stock right um so next if we take a look at cash flow from operations the company one it is not expected to be profitable anytime soon and two is not expected to have positive cash flow from operations this quarter and this year they did have a positive cash flow from operations but it's not due to the business it's due to some other segment 
of unity. Um, and that's something I talk about later on in a full analysis, but it is not positive in cash flow for operations yet. And it's not positive in earnings. So I have to be super, super strict in its financial health. But the great thing about its financial health is the company has no debt and it has a great amount of cash. So this allows me to overlook that negativity in cash flow from operations and that negativity on earnings. And before we go any further, so if you want to learn how to analyze a company and become a better investor, make sure to check out my Patreon, where every single week I drop educational videos to help you become a better investor. The second company I want to take a look at today is Doshebo. This is a LMS. You might be like, oh, say, what the heck is an LMS? LMS is a learning management system. So what Doshebo does in in just a quick overview, it creates, let's say you are a company and you want to do training for your employees. You can use Doshable to kind of create your content, to kind of post your content and then have, have an ability to read analytics. They can also help you create applications. Maybe you want to have your, your learning through a phone application. Doshable has its own system where you can create your own application so your employees can download and learn over time. Um, they have a lot of big customers right now from Walmart, Amazon, AWS, DocuSign, Bose, Heineken, Uber. So these are some people currently using Doshebo. And right, and it, it, it tracks like your employees, it sends your employees emails if they need, I mean, pretty much what you have at your job, you know, at your job, you probably have some form of training system where you probably get graded or you have to take some form of training every X amount of years. That's how those shape works outside of your regular big business in general. Let's say you wanted to create some form of educational content to sell out. Those shape also works perfect for that. So those shape this is a Canadian company, but you can trade it under NASDAQ as ticker DCBO. Right now, it's traded at $55.90. It's up about $2.85. For the full year, Doshebo is up 415%. But I want to say this stock price hasn't really moved too much since around, I want to say, November. The stock price hasn't really moved much. Um, and from its all-time highs, it's actually down about 15%. So Doshebo has a market cap of about $2 billion. So it's a very, very small company. If we take a look at future growth, the company is expected to grow 28.4% on average for the next three to five years. The company is not profitable right now, but it is expected to be cash flow from operations by this upcoming quarter, which will be the quarter of December 30th of 2020. Next, if we take a look at their balance sheet, their balance sheet also looks amazing because they have no debt and they have plenty of cash and short-term investments. If we take a look at their ownership, individual insiders own about 59%. Their number one chairman of board and independent chairman of the board owns about 45% of the business. Insiders have been selling a bit right now, um, and a, a lot of people see that as a negative thing. But when you own about 59% of in, of of ownership from individual insiders, you're definitely going to see some big chunks, right? Tell me what multi-billion dollar company you have right now that into individual insiders own more than 25, 30%. This one has about 60%. So even if they're selling, they're trying to make their money, let them be. Um, so I don't see that as too much of a negativity as many other uh, as other people see it. So like I mentioned, Doshebo has some great companies that uh, are partnered up with them. AWS, L'Oreal, HP, um, Pearson, Heineken, BMW, um, Denny's, and like I mentioned some more early on. Another great thing is they have about 2,000 customers right now and 94% of their revenue is actually reoccurring revenue. And here's just a perfect example of what you can use their platform for. You can use them in your mobile, tablets, you can make your own web page out of it. And historically, Doshebo has a 58% reoccurring revenue compounded annual growth rate. This company, like I mentioned, makes is making most of its money from reoccurring. And the great thing about that is, right, let you probably know if your business is using a, a specific company right now to make learning applications, the chances of them moving out of it is, is going to be very, very low, just because I, I want to say those platforms are very sticky. So if we already have like big companies like AWS using them, I don't foresee them moving anytime soon. 
don't forget to follow me on Twitch. I stream almost every Mondays and Tuesdays at 8.30 Eastern time. And we pretty much just take a look at stocks you want to look at. So make sure to follow me tonight and see you there. The third company we're going to take a look at is called Logic. And they have partnerships with Z or Shopee Pay in Indonesia. Um, and they are pretty much ex called like the Shopify of Southeast Asia. So you might ask Jose, what does Shop, um, Shopify of Southeast Asia mean? So if you guys know, for example, Shopify, the main platform or the main business of Shopify is to transform your brick and mortar business to the e-commerce side. But to be able to use Shopify, you either need a laptop or a desktop or at least a tablet. And over here in Southeast Asia, they mentioned that this is actually Shopify for mobile. So you don't need a desktop to go e-commerce and you just need your phone. And this is a market Shopify is really not hitting. And this is, uh, you might be like, Jose, what's, why should we, why is this important? Why is it Shopify for the mobile? In Southeast Asia and very and a lot of undeveloping countries, um, a lot of the business owners and the, the CEO actually did an interview on YouTube and you guys should definitely check it out. It's on YouTube um, and I definitely rec recommend it. And he mentioned that in Southeast Asia and all these developing countries, the actual percentage of people that have a computer or a laptop are about 20% of the population. But the amount of people that own a, a phone are around are over 150 percent and you might be like how is it 150 percent the reason is some of these people have more than one phone so obviously if you're hitting the southeast asia market or these developing markets you're not going to want to hit the desktop you're not going to want to hit the the laptop market you're going to want to be able to create a platform that helps businesses transform from their regular business to some form of e-commerce in a way that they can and that is through mobile where and here's a perfect example where mobile in the united states only compromises about 45 percent of all u.s online retail by 2024 in southeast asia already now in 2021 mobile compromises 78 percent of all of southeast asia's online retail so what exactly do they do if you uh you download their application and it actually helps you make application it makes you help like a website um allows you to have all these types of mobile fintechs e-wallets to be able to transact for your store so like i said it's the perfect solution from going from a brick and mortar store all the way to an e-commerce application or store all right so this is ticker lgiq and it's called logic logic is right now traded over the counters here in the united states and it has a seven dollar and 82 price range in the past year it is up about 20 percent and from its all-time highs it is down about 40 percent right now the market cap is about 122 million dollars one thing i do want to say is this company was definitely impacted due to COVID situations a lot of those business, small businesses in southeast asia had to close down and small and micro businesses is their main market if we take a look at their future growth analysts don't expect much from this company and if you're looking at it from simply wall street that's because there's only one analyst looking at it so that can't that i, I want to say that's not a great great thing to look at it means not many analysts are looking at it so it might be something hiding under our noses what i do like is their financial health so financially they have a nice amount of cash about 4.8 million and about 3.4 million dollars of debt so they have more cash than debt right so fundamentally in future growth there's not much we can see from the company because not too many analysts are looking at it all right so these are the three companies i purchased this week and if you guys want to know when i buy or sell stocks make sure to join my discord channel it's free to anybody that wants to join and i am very transparent so i post every time i buy and sell if i was to put them in tier levels i want to say the one I'm, I'm super excited super excited is would be unity after that i would say it would be logic and after that would be doshable so those would be like in, in rank levels which would be my favorite um logic like uh, unity like i mentioned i'm super bullish in the gaming department i'm super bullish in the augmented and virtual reality department so uh, so that's definitely there with unity we're also seeing that strong revenue growth and it's hitting all different types of markets 
Unfortunately, I do believe many people might say it's a bit overextended or a bit overvalued at the moment. And that might be true. The second one was Logic, right? That I mentioned was my second favorite was Logic. Logic, I'm super bullish. I'm super happy about that one because it has partnerships with Z. It is hitting Southeast Asia, which is a market we're seeing a lot of growth growth in right now. And being like the Shopify of it, but hitting a market that Shopify is not in right now is another bullish segment, right? The overall e-commerce transformation is a big one but no one's really hitting it in the way for the shopify or mobile like they were my negative things on logic obviously are going to be that one um it is a very small cap company right now um so it might have it it's definitely in its kind of startup phase the third of my favorite is those shape all right i do believe the educational content creation market is definitely a big one um they had some great customers and it is a sticky business Unfortunately, it's just not a market. I'm super, super excited. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care and have a good night.